Hello, this is very near the area where we all experience some very strange phenomena. When I say we, I mean three people. Um, I went on holiday with a group of people. This was in around 1990, I think it was 1996, 1995. Yeah, it would be 1995. And um, this is um, the scene of where it happened. Um, my friend and um, my stepfather, who was actually had his own experiences of seeing an alien craft. I'll explain about that. And he never deviated from his story. He was um, a chemist working in research and development at ICI, and that was based in Cheshire. And I will explain his story um, and how that affected him um, in later years and how he became very interested in, in UFO phenomena after that. This is what happened to us. And this is a house in Triada Bay, which is in Anglesey in Wales in the UK. And my friend, um, who was accompanying my stepfather, who I've just um, explained, spoken about, were um, on the way home from a hotel bar where they'd been having a drink. And my friend was very, very shocked when he came into where we were staying and he told us that he had just seen a pitch black figure that was some 9 to 12 feet tall and he'd seen it near this house they passed this house and it moved out from near the doorway showed itself to him and then moved back and he apparently my stepfather was talking at the time quite animated they both had a drink and he, he didn't manage to see it when my friend told me about it but that they was both talking about it when they got back and um, the subsequent night me and my friend went out to have a look and we went round the this is the house we went to the left hand so the right hand side of the house uh, behind the house which is this area here there was like a kind of island a bit a bit quite a bit away from the house like this where you could look across the sea and we went there very early in the early hours of the morning in the summer. It was um, very, very nice. And I had a pantheistic experience, which wasn't unusual at the time because I was um, very just getting into nature and just getting into trees and the energies of trees and um, such is the like. And um, I was very, very kind of blissed out. I don't know if my energy attracted what happened next. I'm not sure. But I was with my friend. And um, my friend was at university at the time. She was taking a break and she was very down to earth. She used to think that the type of things that I spoke about were quite comical. And um, she's looking, say, around here, this part, and I'm sort of like here. And I'll do a reconstruction, which I think um, is, is very realistic. I actually saw... Um, one black figure and um, it just appeared that I'm sort of stood here and this black figure just appeared here which is, is this yeah and um, I thought to myself that wasn't there before and I looked at it and it looked very much like an obelisk it was very rounded at the top it looked like an obelisk that you have at your gatepost um, very large obelisk at that and it was absolutely jet black even though it was the early hours of the morning about 5am it was jet black and what it looked to be like was wet but the sea wasn't lapping it the tide was very still so because the top of it and the sides of it which I would take to be about four foot protruding about four foot out of the water and about I'd say about three foot two and a half foot in circumference at the base it did taper like I said it had an obelisk type appearance and I wondered how the, the top of it could be wet and shiny and then I convinced myself maybe it's just that type of rock and my eyes kept going back to it and it appeared that the rock was kind of bumpy and it reminded me what it looked like of when they lay the roads and they have the gravel and they cover them in asphalt 
are bitumen. So you have like the gravel covered in this like rubbery substance, and that's what these look like. This look like, but it was it was wet, and I thought it was very strange. And then I turned the other way, and I was looking sort of like towards this area, looking away from it at my friend, and she came and joined me. We had a little brief conversation. I said, "Come and have a look at this." She walked over with me, and then. There were two of them. And then I knew that it wasn't just a rock, that it was in the sea, an unusual looking rock, and they were identical. And she said to me, what are them? What are they? And I immediately recognised that there was two. They, <laughs> I'd definitely only seen one, very close together, and I linked my friend and I said, come on, let's go. And we went back to where we were staying, and I explained what I'd just seen, and that there was originally one of them, and then there was two. And my friend was frightened when when she said my name, and she said, what, what are they? What are them? Um, and I tried to bring up the subject with her. That's My friend said that's what he saw, but what he saw was a lot taller. So I'm wondering if what we saw was the same thing, but because they were in seawater, only, say, four and a half foot of them was um, above, and maybe the other few foot was beneath the water on the sea floor. What my friend said he saw fitted the description of what we saw exactly. But he said it was between nine and twelve foot tall or maybe a little bit taller. Um these obviously were about like I said four foot. But if the if they're submerged in the water then that would be hiding. But they was definitely alive because originally there was only one. And then suddenly there was two. Uh, at the time, I had a very strange thought. I thought, one for me, one for her. What are they going to do? When in the midst of, I don't know if this attracted this experience, in the midst of this, what I would call a pantheistic experience, I felt I am not a good swimmer at all. I really dislike swimming. I sink. So um, I had this strong urge. I will say urge. I'd say I felt like I was being pulled to go closer and closer to the water. This before I noticed this thing. And um, it was a very strong feeling. And although at the time I was admiring the beauty of the sea and all the other things, um, I did not want to go in. And I actually spoke out loud. And I felt like I was being kind of magnetically drawn. But I was sensible enough not to go in the water and I said I'm it's not I'm not ready yet and I had um a brief feeling that I would at one time because as a, I was a pantheist at the time and I believe that when you die you go back into everything that is alive you form um falls away and your essence permeates it all life again. I don't quite believe that now, but um, this is a long time ago. And I had the feeling that perhaps because of my admiration for all of the beauty around me, that I was going to sort of like disappear in it. I have had that experience many times after this, but it, I wouldn't say it was the same because I'd done a lot of meditation and I was prepared for it. Um, but on this occasion, it was definitely a very negative feeling that I didn't want to. And the emergence of these, whatever they were at the time, definitely put me off. Um, so for the next explanation about um, my, the way I, that my stepfather spoke, I will, this is from memory, but he did speak of it many times. He had a responsible job. He was on his way home in, I think it was Cheshire or Chester, some country lane. And he um, 
it was a big craft. He said it was absolutely huge and it was circular and it was blocking his way in the path. It's country lane. He said it was absolutely huge and it spanned the fields on either side of the country lane also. And he tried to get around it by going into one of the fields and he ended up on his knees. This is the story he told everybody. He ended up on his knees on this country road, gripping his ears because he said this piercing sound came from the craft and it was extremely painful and he was holding his ears on his knees, screaming, stop, stop, stop. And he was crawling off to the side and um, as quick as the craft had, had arrived, it shot off. He said it shot off directly upwards. It just disappeared. And he told exactly the same tale many, many times. And that would be, I'd say, in around 1970, between 1974 and 1976 when that happened. I was I was very young. And he still stuck to the story and he became very interested in UFO phenomenon. Now, this area where we saw these um, things... <laughs> Yeah, this is a, a reconstruction. These, um, I'm just trying to show you, uh, give you an idea. These are a lot bigger, but um, it was smaller. Yeah, this area where we saw these things is um, a few years after that, I was given a book called The Electromagnetic Indictment, and it was about this area in Wales. And um, there was a lot of activity similar to what I'd explained and other UFO phenomenon and even little beings and creatures being seen by people um, not far from this area and around this area. And it was something called the Electromagnetic Triangle. And the book gave references to the MOD facility, which was nearby, and that the MOD in this area were experimenting with electromagnetic frequencies. So these may have been a consequence of that Um I did find the book very interesting. You'll probably still find it if you want to read it. Uh, the Electromagnetic Indictment. I don't know who the author was. Um, so back to my um, stepfather. He said that um, sometime after this, he was sitting at home. And um, this is probably five years afterwards. He said he was being attacked. This was around, I'd say, 1980, something like that by what he said were some kind of beams, energetic beams, and that they was going through his skull. And he could feel them. And he said it was every night at the same time. Started about 8 o'clock, he said, and it carried on through the night. And he'd had enough of it. And this is something that is um, familiar to a lot of people that go online and look at this type of thing, this targeting, that people use tinfoil hats and things. Well, my stepfather was a chemist and he was familiar with things like energy and things and he used a tinfoil hat. Yeah, he was a chief chemist in research and development and he, he put a tinfoil hat on and sat in his home <laughs> um, because of these beams. So he's had this experience with the UFO in the early 70s, early to mid 70s, and then later on, he starts getting attacked with these beams. And um, over time, they, they did lessen and they did go away. And and something else that's quite interesting as well is that my mother, this would be around 1992, my mother was also what I now recognise as being a targeted individual. At the time, we didn't know what what that was. Um, in 1992, my mother saw a spacecraft and she drew the spacecraft for me and we all thought it was extremely funny. My mother was not a liar. She was very, very honest. She was Christian. Um, very honest, very pious. And um, <laughs> she drew this, it was a typical saucer, but she said it had turrets all the way around it. It had like portholes, she said square portholes with like what she said looked like guns sticking out from them 
all the way around the top of it. And since then, the internet's come about and other people have described seeing craft and such the like. And quite a lot of people have said that these crafts they've seen have had windows or portholes all the way around them. And um, there was another man on the street, at the top of the street, and he said he'd seen this craft as well. He got taken away. I don't know why. He wasn't dangerous. He wasn't annoying anyone. Maybe it was to protect information. I have no idea. So these things never struck me as being unusual at the time. But now I think to myself, not every single family has these experiences. Not every single family is targeted. Not every single family has experiences of UFOs or, or beams, and I am a tax individual. And um, I don't know if this is linked or not, the things that I've mentioned and um, whether that's anything to do with things. I'm also rhesus negative, blood group, as was my mother, rhesus negative. And my mother's targeting began in the very early 70s and um, it may be linked to a, a very famous entertainer that, that my mother was a fan of and she saw quite a lot of not in a romantic sense but because I can't really ask any more questions these people are not here I just these things are from memory but they strike me as being things that occurred around certain timelines and therefore may or may not be linked. Um, okay, I just thought I'd put that online because maybe somebody else has seen these things in this area. Maybe other people know about the MOD in that area, what they were up to. Um, or maybe you've just seen a craft or, you know. Okay, thank you. God bless.